Hello everyone, welcome back. And we have finished the first chapter of HCIA Cloud Computing. And today we will continue our course. And in this chapter, we begin to introduce computational virtualization. Cloud Computing 1.0 focuses on the virtualization, which has become the foundation of cloud computing. In this chapter, we will talk about the architecture and the technology involved in cloud computing. So, many people may confuse computing virtualization with cloud computing. Actually, virtualization is just a technology for getting started with cloud computing. And every computing practitioner will start with this technology first. Okay, here, let's see the goals of this chapter. When we finish this course, the first goal is to be able to describe what virtualization is, and the second goal is to understand the difference between virtualization and cloud computing, and the third goal is understand the KVM technology, and the last one is understand Huawei's Fusion Sphere virtualization solution. Okay, next we will learn the first subsection, Introduction to Virtualization. The most important feature of virtualization is that the physical machine is converted into a virtual machine. How is a virtual machine created? Next, we look at what is virtualization. Virtualization is to localize the physical devices. The physical servers we used before can all be seen and touched. We take a list of equipment and we can see and point out each device and the components inside the device. Visualization is to localize and physical devices into a folder or file. This folder or file must contain two parts. One part is used to record the configuration information of devices. For example, how many CPUs and how many memories you use, which folder the hard disk is placed on, or it belongs to which files, and the other part is the data of the real user, and the corresponding physical device belongs to the physical hard disk. Since a physical machine can be converted into a file or a folder, the file or folder can be saved on a physical machine at the same time. This process allows one physical machine to be visualized into multiple virtual machines. And multiple physical machines can run on a single virtual machine, and each virtual machine can run on an operating system on its own. This can improve the resource utilization of physical hardware and reduce the waste of hardware resources. Because Virtualization technology makes this combination of hardware and software. Virtualization is equivalent to getting rid of servers in placement, allowing virtual machines to migrate back and forth within the cluster. Therefore, virtualizing the physical machine will generate a lot of virtualization features, such as high availability, dynamic, we call it HA. Dynamic resource mobilized, we call it DRS. Distribute power magnet, we call it DPM, and so on. Does virtualization sound really high level? In fact, the technology of virtualization is not a new technology in the IT field. As early as 1964, Blue Joint IBM began to try to achieve virtualization on the mainframe. Even in 1961, IBM's 709 machine had realized a time-sharing system, which cut the CPU footprint into multiple short time slots, and each slice performs different tasks. By pulling these time slides, you can visualize and disguise a CPU into multi-CPUs and let each virtual CPU appear to be running at the same time. This is a prototype of the virtual machine. Later, System 360 machines support time-sharing systems. 
1972, IBM officially named the system 370 Machines Time Sharing System as a virtual machine. In 1990, IBM introduced the system 390 Machine to support logical partitioning, dividing a CPU into several parts, and each CPU is independent. That means a physical CPU can be logically divided into 10 CPUs. After IBM opened up the time sharing system, visualization of the x86 architecture began to be realized. In 1999, VMware introduced the first visualization product that could run on the x86 architecture. Well, VMware was developing its own visualization products in 1990s. Len Pratt and Keir Fraser of University of Cambridge in London developed the Zen Visual Machine in a research project called Zender Sensor. As a heard of Zender Sensor, the Zen Visual Machine managed and the allocate system provides the necessary statistical capabilities. At that time, X86 processor did not have hardware support for visualization technology. So, Zen emerged as a parallel visualized solution from the start. Therefore, in order to support multiple virtual machines, the kernel must make special modification to Zen to run. In order to attract more developers to participate, Zen was officially open source in 2002. After 1.0 and 2.0 versions, then began to integrate with Linux distribution such as Red Hat, Novo, and SAM as a virtualization solution. In 2004, Intel engines began adding hardware visualization support to Zen to prepare the necessary software for the upcoming new processor. And there their efforts, Zen 3.0, released in 2005, began to officially support Intel's VT technology and the IA64 architecture. And so, then virtual machines can run completely unmodified operating systems. In addition to them, the other is famous KVM, originally developed by an Israeli startup, Quirinet as a virtual machine for their VDI products. For simplified development, KVM developer did not choose to write a new hypervisor from the ground up. Instead, they chose a Linux kernel based on the Linux kernel to make the Linux kernel itself a hypervisor by loading new modules. In October 2006, QueerNet officially announced the birth of KVM after completing basic functions, dynamic migraine, and optimization of major functions and performance. In October of this year, the source code of the KVM module was formally accepted into the Linux kernel and became part of the kernel source code. On September 4, 2008, Red Hat, a well known Linux distribution provider with a deep roots in the kernel community and expertly invest $100 million to acquire Quirinet, becoming the new owner of the KVM open source project. Thanks to this acquisition, Red Hat has its own virtual machine solution. So it began to replace them with KVM in its own products. In November 2010, Red Hat launched a new enterprise version of Linux RHEL6, which integrates the latest KVM virtual machine in this release and removes the then integrated in the RHEL5. Between 2006 and 2010, major traditional IT vendors introduced their own products in terms of virtualization. In 2007, HP introduced integrated virtual machines and uh, Microsoft joined Hyper-V in Windows Server 2008 R2. When the X86 
Eight, six, architecture visualization is in full swing. A lightweight visualization is slowly evolving. And that is container. The latest container products can be traced back to the Unix crowds in 1979. By 2008, after years of development, Linux introduced RxC, also known as Linux containers which was the first complete Linux container management implementation. Its functionality is implemented through C groups and the Linux namespaces. LXC is delivered through the LXC library and provides APIs that interface with languages such as Python 3 and so on. Compared to other container technology, RxC can run on top of the original Linux kernel without any additional patches. The RxC project is currently sponsored and hosted by the Canonical LTD. In 2013, the Docker container project was launched. Docker also used RxC in its infancy and then replaced it with its own lib container. Unlike other container platforms, Docker introduced a whole ecosystem of container management. These include an efficient hierarchical container mirroring model, a global and a local container registry, a streamlined REST API, and a set of command line interfaces. In the later stage of development, Docker also built a container cluster management solution called Docker Swarm. In 2014, Rocket was launched. It was originally developed by CoreOS and is designed to solve some of flow in Docker. CoreOS also mentioned that their original development goal was to surpass Docker in terms of security and the production requirements. More importantly, it is based on the APP container specification and makes it a more open standard. Okay, everyone, until now, we have learned virtual machine, virtualization, and the history of virtualization. And in next course, we will continue to learn more details about virtualization. See you!